Hi, I'm Dr. Michelle. Secrets of life and death. Today's secret is love. Why is love so hard? Why is love so difficult? Well, part of it is that we really need it. It's part of our biological makeup to really need love, to feel valuable, to feel important, to feel positive about ourselves. We are biologically created to need love. It's part of our makeup. But as spiritual beings, we also need love. Which begs the question, what is love? I think a lot of us confuse attention and appreciation and gifts with love, but love is something very different. A feeling of well-being, a feeling of all right with the world, a feeling of generosity, a feeling of gratitude. A lot of us feel a lot of us are in deficit, and so it's hard to get into that state because we never had the love that we needed. Or maybe we had the love and we lost it. For example, maybe you had a divorce, or maybe you had, you lost a partner because they died, or you lost another loved one. And now you're feeling like, whoa, how come I had to lose it? So that's even, in some ways, even worse than never having love at all. Because people who've never had love at all, or just little thimblefuls, have learned to adapt. But somebody who has been in deep love with somebody and then loses them, or feels safe and then loses that safety, it's really traumatic, isn't it? You feel angry. Maybe you feel like you made a mistake or that something was wrong or you feel like a victim or you feel overwhelmed with emotions because of course the emotions can be all over the map. They can um, go from feeling despondent and, and just not being able to move at all to wanting, to, you know, unbelievable fury. And those feelings feel overwhelming, especially if you're not used to them. I remember the first time I lost a partner, the emotions were just overwhelming, and they are because our bodies are chemical factories and their, their power is really, really impressive. So first of all, compassion. If you're going through a rough patch around love, if you're not getting the love you need, if you're having difficulty in a relationship, if you lost a relationship, if somebody has died and your heart feels torn out, sending you love right now. Sending you love. Can you receive it? As a PhD psychosocial analyst, I have worked for many years with people around grief and loss and love and how that all ties in together. When you deal with somebody who has had a significant loss, you really get a clear picture of what has happened and what is missing. And what I really noticed is that a lot of the emotions that are happening right now take you all the way back to your childhood that it's all connected, that your response to this current loss is a reaction to earlier losses. And it's so an opportunity for healing, an opportunity to clean house, to become empowered. I know that's a difficult thing if you are in a recent loss. You may need to just give yourself some time to just heal to recover because loss of a significant or important loved one is a shock to the system, a shock to this body. But when you've gotten over that initial trauma 
when you've gotten over that initial shock, which could take anywhere from three months to a year, you get to a point where you start to think, well, now what? Am I going to go through the rest of my life in this place of unlovability, of not getting love? And your body actually needs a certain amount of love. Hi, thank you for joining. Your body actually needs a certain amount of love to feel good, to feel empowered, to make a difference in this world, to live your purpose, to be effective. You need love. So what can you do? Well, going back to what I have discovered, a lot of it goes back to early childhood experiences. As children, we need a certain amount of attention and love and nurturing and cuddling and tactile stimulation to develop properly, to feel safe, because we're wired that way. Human infants are extremely vulnerable and dependent for many, many years. And if they don't receive what they need, it has an impact on the way in which they develop and on their way in which they can actually show up in relationships. So that's number one. They end up wondering or worrying about feeling worthy enough or valuable enough or wanted or good enough and they develop patterns, or we develop patterns, because most of us have these patterns, develop patterns to ensure a certain amount of attention. Now, I want you to understand that attention and recognition and appreciation is not the same as love. But on a phys physiological level, it actually feels reinforcing. That is, when you do something good for somebody, which is the habit of the people pleaser, you get a hit from that. You get a chemical hit of either oxytocin or dopamine or perhaps a bit of both. And this makes you feel good. Maybe it doesn't take care of all of your needs, but it makes you feel good. And so that habit becomes deeply embedded and rooted in your system. So now you move fast forward to your loss and you find that there's nobody to manipulate for that attention. They're gone. And then the wound, the emptiness, the hole, the hollow inside of you is almost unfillable. First of all, nobody can replace the person you've lost. And so it, it feels impossible. Second of all, no matter what they give you, it's never enough. And it's never enough because it never was enough to begin with. The love, real love, has to come from a different place. We cannot get love outside of ourselves. I know this sounds like a cliche, but you actually need to learn to love yourself. And you need to connect to a different source of love. I accidentally fell into this after the loss or the divorce of my first husband. I was a people pleaser and I could not fathom his leaving me. I mean, he left me for another woman and so of course I naturally felt like it was something wrong with me because that's what people pleasers feel like is that there's something wrong and they need to fix it. They need to do something different in order to make up for their inadequacy. So I joined a spiritual community where relationships didn't matter, which wasn't a bad decision because God doesn't reject you. Divine doesn't reject you. It's there all the time like the sunlight. It's there and when you tap into it, you feel great. When you get into that spiritual divine connection where your heart expands and of course the work 
well. The work that I did, which was Sufi work, was a work of the heart. It, uh, very different from uh, Zen Buddhism. It was, it's an ex ecstatic practice, and you actually feel this opening of your heart. Now, I actually needed that opening because I had been shut down since I was two years old, since my father had left me to be transferred to Japan, and I felt abandoned and felt unworthy. Hi, thank you for joining Talking About Love and talking about what you can do about issues around love and what are some of the things that come up. Why do we have problems with love? Well, one of the reasons we have problems with love go all the way back to when we're children. And now I'm not bashing parents because chances are they did not have a lot of love when they were kids. And so they're just repeating the same dynamic that they were taught when they were children. Maybe they didn't even ever learn how to love. There have been psychological studies of children that in the first three years, if they don't get the love that they need to feel appreciated, to feel valued, to feel important, this impacts their ability to love other people. In fact, the early studies of chimpanzees showed that when these, cho these baby chimps were denied the affection of mothers, they never learned how to, how to mother. We learn both through modeling and observation how to love. So if you haven't had enough love, you may not know how to give love. Now, the good news is that yes, you can learn. There was a point in my life when I actually got a cat because I needed to learn how to nurture. I was taking care of uh, court adjudicated teenage girls and they all, hi, we're talking about love. So these young teenage girls, they were not getting the love they needed, but I didn't know how to give it to them. So I actually got a cat to teach me how to love. And he did. He actually took it. This male tomcat actually took it to heart as part of his contract to teach me how to love. Now it was a start because it's a long, it's a process to learn. And the habits that we learn in childhood become deeply rooted in our system. It becomes deeply rooted in our behavior. And when you try to change that behavior, it can leave you in deficit. So now we're talking about two deficits. We're talking about a deficit that comes from uh, a partner loss and you don't feel, you feel cheated, you feel angry, you feel abandoned, you feel a victim, you may feel frozen, you may feel reckless. Because in addition to needing love, these bodies are also wired to be sexually active unless you've shut that down a long time. I was working with one of my clients and she said to me that uh, she was having a writer's block and she's had it for several years. And I said, well, how's your sex life? And she said, oh, non-existent. I said, well, your sacral area is where you get your creativity. And if you are not feeding that area, if you are not energizing that area, if you're not acknowledging that, yeah, you're gonna dry up. So understanding your body, relating and understanding your body's needs is a big plus for helping you over your emotional wounds, both from childhood and your current wounds. But my experience coaching people through grief and loss is that what is happening with you right now is related to early childhood experiences. Hi, thank you for joining. And that when you take this experience that's happening right now as an opportunity to clear out the old stuff, then, oh my gosh, then you have so much value. And I know it's really irresistible to want to just feel bad for yourself and feel sorry for yourself and say, no, I don't want to do anything. I want 
the universe to take care of me. I want somebody to take care of me because I feel so bad. And how can you be even talking about my having to do anything? Well, I'm sorry. There are no Prince Charmings. People are not going to come and rescue you. Ultimately, it's your journey to become empowered. And I have, I have over the time, years, years and years of working with people around grief and loss, first in hospice, hospice support groups, coaching, uh, sharing my film series, that the loss that you have right now is perfect to helping you to deal with your emotional wounds from your childhood. It sets you up. It breaks you open. It gives you the opportunity and the momentum and the motivation to do something, which most of us don't worry about because if we're just getting enough, we're getting enough from the people pleasing, we're getting enough from our controlling behavior, then we have no motivation, even though you know some of our behaviors are actually damaging to our health or hold us back from living our purpose or eventually chase our partners away or eventually cause them to die. I'll give you some examples. So I have a client who she, well, she has a number of issues, but there was an early childhood abandonment very similar to my own. That is, she got sick, she got pneumonia, and she was put in an isolation unit for several days. And she was barely, she wasn't even two years old, and it was very traumatic to her. And this pattern of abandonment repeated itself again and again, as it did with me. Because on the spiritual level, your spirit is trying to heal you, but also to give you experiences that are going to be valuable for what you need to be doing in the world. Whoa, wrap your mind around that. That's what I believe, and that's what I've been experiencing. I've been working in grief and loss and people with emotional wounds for over 20 years, 25 years. I understand the dynamic of this. And savor this opportunity to change. Utilize it. Now, I actually decided to work on my own emotional wounds when I met my second husband because I realized that my abandonment issues were there. Partly my heart opened from doing the spiritual work. Well, big, big time. So I was even able to attract love into my life. But then I could see the pattern of wanting to run away. The pattern of looking for signs of abandonment. And that's what people who have been abandoned do. They're always looking for for the sign because they don't want to be caught unaware because it's such a shock to the system. And then it happens anyway, doesn't it? So let's talk a minute about um, how another, well, let me tell you about another client who also repeated the pattern. She lost her first husband. He committed suicide. And she had to take care of herself and three children and move forward in her life, and she did it. But she, there were things that never were resolved. And so she found later in her life that her, some of her children, one of her children, one of her daughters, was actually manifesting suicidal ideation. And she was panicked that, she, that somehow she was going to repeat this experience where she lost her husband and had not been able to save him. And we work together to clear the pattern, to heal the emotional trauma and wound so that she could move forward in her life, live more fully, more effectively, and actually support her child, her daughter, without trying to control her. Because you know what? You can't really control people. Why try again? Okay, you've lost the love of your life. Or you've been abandoned through divorce or just been, you know, 
broken up with. And you say, well, why would I want to put myself through that again? It hurts. It makes me feel worthless and I can live without it. Well, you actually can live without it. I lived for 13 years in a spiritual community and the uh, ecstatic state that I got in from the spirituality and then I learned to take care of my own sexual needs. I was actually quite fine. And what I realized also was that if I had relationships that were not romantic, I could get a lot of my emotional, intellectual, and companionship needs taken care of. Okay, it's not as convenient as having a partner or a husband, and it's not quite as satisfying. Hi, thanks for joining. However, relationships with other people can really help you a lot. I remember working with another client. She had lost, her love of her life was her daughter, and her daughter got cancer and died, and she was devastated. And I tried to keep on telling her, you need to receive hugs. And she didn't want to because they weren't hugs from her daughter. But the fact of the matter is our bodies really do accept hugs from other people. So yes, you can get some of your needs met in the meantime with significant relationships, with other kinds of relationships that may not be romantic, but fulfill certain emotional needs that you have. Now here's the trick. If you are in deficit, deficit, if you are needy, if you are reaching out and trying to grab and pull love into your life, you're going to chase people away. I know, I've experienced that. I remember one time going to a uh, the summer retreat, a spiritual retreat, and I'm coming from a place where a lot of guys were giving me a lot of attention and it was great and I come into the uh, Sufi camp and nobody wants to have anything to do with me. Well, partly I came late and so they were in a different energy state. And the more I wanted their attention, the more they pulled away from me. Fortunately, I was at a spiritual retreat, and so I focused on getting into that state. So here's another really key, big key, is if you can get into that spiritual state, that is a way of shifting your energy. And then you can actually show up in a relationship, in not in that place of deficit. But I want to tell you one other thing about this whole dynamic, is that we have learned these patterns in childhood that have given us the basic essentials we needed to survive. We survived, you're here right now, right? So you survived. So the people-pleasing pattern, or the controlling pattern, or the performing pattern, they are so deeply ingrained, and when you decide that you need to change them, and you may need to change them because you're always outward focused and you're not dealing with coming from your power and yourself. And so those patterns hold you back. They can make you sick. They can chase your loved one away. They can cause your loved one to die. So you, you actually want to heal these patterns, but they are very resistant. And when you get off of them, it's a lot like getting off a drug because they have succeeded in giving you those boosts of oxytocin and dopamine. And when you stop, you start to feel bad and you start to go back to the pattern because that's the only pattern you know. And, and you, the craving can be overwhelming. So you start to understand exactly how desperate people who have had a significant loss might be in terms of feeling unworthy, unlovable, and miserable. These bodies need love. If you would like to know more about how I work with people, would like to have a conversation, click on the link over in the comment section and schedule a 15 minute call with me or you can send me a message. 
These patterns are not easy to change. They are resistant and sometimes you aren't even aware of them. And then when you start to change them, fear comes up. You actually feel afraid because, uh, because it's bringing up those old emotional wounds from childhood. That's why I work with people who are at that point in life where they really want to change because you need to be motivated. It's really hard to change unless you're motivated. Now with drugs, you know, you hit rock bottom, right? And it forces you to change. But with love, where you've learned these patterns of getting that those boosts of appreciation of likes on Facebook, and because your social community actually supports you in that, because you know, your people out there, they like your giving, they like your helping them, they like you playing hero or uh, stepping in and, and giving your time and your energy and not taking care of yourself. So you get supported and then you pull that back and there can be a backlash, there can be a resistance to your changing. And inside, the inner child is going freaking out because she's, you're crazy. You're going to die if you do that. That's the belief. That's the, the child's belief. I'm going to die. Hi, thank you for joining. I'm telling you, I'm really dissecting this whole process of, of love and what is really underneath and the patterns that hold us to actions and behaviors that actually go against true love, true intimacy. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about what true intimacy is. True intimacy is being yourself. Whoa, but what does that mean? If you've been a people pleaser all your life, you haven't a clue because you've never even taken the time to ask yourself who you are or what you like. I'm working with a client right now. She has no idea because all of her focus was out on pleasing other people. And so now she's, how do you know what you like? Well, you know that you like the old patterns because you felt safe doing them. And now I'm saying, no, you've got to change those patterns. Okay, so what do you really like? Well, I don't know. I don't even know how to identify what I like. Well, I can teach you how to do that, to understand that, to experience that and to change your patterns incrementally so that you actually get what you need but without sabotaging who you are, without sabotaging your success in relationships, in love, and even in work. So one more reason why you want love in your life and it doesn't have to be romantic love, as I have already pointed out, but to have love um, also is inspirational. When you feel safe, when you feel important, when you feel valued, you actually can step into your purpose and passion more easily because the body feels safe and it's going, not going to be fighting you as much. And of course, being loved not only feels good, but if you have relationships, you have companionship. You're not alone. It's one of our biggest fears is to be alone. To, uh, in fact, they found that one of the worst tortures is to put people into solitary confinement. It actually causes hallucinations and emotional disturbance. That's that, and you know, it's that's the way bodies, these bodies are made. So I invite you to have some compassion for your body. Recognize that they are adaptable, that they can change. It helps to have guidance, to have help to move you forward. Because otherwise, who are you listening to? You're listening to that inner child inside that is afraid that's afraid to change and uh, also uh, goes into despair when you take away her, her patches, her patterns that have helped her survive. 
But you know what? We're here to have a much bigger life than that. A much bigger life than just likes and appreciations. We're here to make a difference. And in order to do that, you have to get out of those habits and step into who you really are to get back to true intimacy. And when you trust yourself, when you love yourself, when you value yourself, that's when you can have true intimacy. That's when you can show up in a relationship and not get thrown off, not feel rejected, not hurt. Relationships are a spiritual practice and an emotional growth practice. Another reason why you might want to try it again. And even if you don't have a romantic, even a um, non-romantic relationship where somebody is important to you, this still has trouble. There's still difficulties. There's still stuff because both of us, both you and the other person, have their childhood patterns. And they need to be worked through. And they are an opportunity to work through the old patterning. And uh, it's, it's just an amazing journey. And the other thing to say is that what you're experiencing is part of your learning of what you need to do, what you are here for. That everything that you go through is, is part of your DNA patterning for changing other people in this world. So pay attention to what you're going through. Pay attention to your experience because you're learning valuable tools. <coughs> I guess I'm finished because I'm losing my throat, my, my voice. But I hope you enjoyed this and have a great weekend. Be brilliant. Bye.